Hey everyone, Sage Valentine here. Welcome to my channel of the same name. Right now, I'm going to review for you guys CW's The Messengers, Season 1, Episode 5. This episode was one of them that I liked the most so far. There'll probably be another one in the next eight episodes, but I really like this one because we were able to see why Erin left her husband, and I'm glad that it turned out that her husband was a little bit paranoid as opposed to being violent and abusive like I originally thought that he was. Now, as far as this season goes, or this episode goes, there were a lot of parts that I really liked. I liked how that lady, the homeless lady, turned out to, I guess, be some sort of helper. But she's not interfering with what the messengers are doing. But at the same time, she's watching them and she's happy about what they're doing. And she appeared to Peter. And she basically gave Peter some clues. So now we know that there were previous messengers who tried to save the world and they ended up failing. So at least we got some background on that. Then in this episode, we were able to see Peter and Nadia kind of bonding because they're around the same age. And it was pretty funny when Nadia um, was taking a shower and Peter walked into the shower. And then Nadia was finally able to witness what it is going on with Peter and the rest of the group. And at first, she didn't believe Peter when she he told her that basically she was or he was an angel. But after seeing him pull that car, now she understands that this kid is an angel. And that so is her uncle and everyone else that he's around. Now, as far as the devil, always busy, they gave him even more of a responsibility this episode because he was a cashier at that casino. He was um, telling stories to the kids at the library. And I was like, you know, that voice sounded familiar. Then I was like, okay, that's the um, devil sitting up there. And then he tried to play Good Samaritan with Aaron. But Aaron wasn't as easily led as everyone else because I don't know what it is, but Aaron to me seems different. I think that if I was going to say what character was the weakest towards the devil, it would probably, in my opinion, be Vera because she's not too keen about like God and religion not that there's anything against that if you don't believe in anything I'm not here to judge anybody about that what I'm saying is that he looked at her as an open door because of her son and then there is um probably Joshua because at this point Joshua is a little open as well so I'm sure the devil's going to find a way to mess with him some way somehow and I'm wondering how he's going to do that in a future episode another thing that happened during this episode too was when the group thought that originally this random dude and this random group or like this random like um he looked like he was like a stockbroker with some type of Ponzi scheme or something and he turned out to not be as evil as they thought he was originally and I did like that whole thing with the like roach symbol that seemed to pop up because at first Aaron and Rose saw the roach in the kitchen and then they saw the spray painted roach and then that girl was like looking at her phone at the um, casino when the devil was basically telling her that she couldn't get any money or put any money into her account and these roach things started popping up and then on the computer screen in that um, man's office the roach thing popped up and we realized that that is Abaddon now I know that Abaddon is a demon I don't know what type of demon off the top of my head but I do know what he is I do have an idea of what he is and I know that he's evil and I'm wondering whoever this person is behind Abaddon I'm more than sure that they are probably the ones that are um going to be involved with the um, horsemen of pestilence because remember when we were finding out about the horsemen of war it wasn't that easy we assumed that it was the man from that um, a Middle Eastern country the Prime Minister I'm sure whoever pestilence is is going to be the most random person that we have ever seen now as far as what else happened in this episode I did like Joshua's um, hallucinations that one with his wife though with her hands bleeding had like this weird stigmata religious imagery thing going on and the fact that she was in white I guess that's how he still sees her I did like that whole thing on the um, merry-go-round with 
Raul and how he thought he was seeing Aaron and then when he kissed Aaron he realized that it was Gabriella but I guess that's a sign there that he's falling in love with Aaron and I do believe she feels the same way now let me see if there's anything else because I don't think there was too much else going on besides Nadia freaking out at everything that she witnessed during this episode um There's actually two things that I did want to discuss. Okay, um, the fact that Rose and the group have to lean so heavily on Joshua and that without Joshua's visions, they're pretty much blind is pretty scary. So that's giving us some type of omen in a future episode that maybe perhaps Joshua may lose his visions again and then the group won't see whatever evil is coming towards them. And then there's that thing at the end when Aaron's nose is bleeding because if you remember during the episode, the Horseman of War mentioned something about, it was either the Horseman of War or it might have been the devil who mentioned something about there being one less angel I don't know if I heard it was a her. For some reason, I thought it was a her, but I'm wondering who could it be? But it was pretty funny how Aaron's nose bled. So does that mean that Aaron is going through something? But then it could be, could mean something's going to happen to Rose, something will happen to Vera, to Peter. It could be anybody. So I'm pretty much worried about our messengers and our um, angels. And again, I enjoyed that ending when I realized that that man in the office turned out to be the girl in the red dress and the fact that she's an angel was even more awesome. So thank you guys so much for being so patient with me. I'm glad that I was finally able to finish this review. There was a lot that happened in the past eight days and eventually I will tell you what happened but at this point I don't even want to talk about it honestly but I will tell you all about it. So you all take care. Hit me up at Sage Valentine at Twitter and Google Plus. Hit that subscribe button. Rate this video, leave your comments about what you thought about this episode as well as this season and what you feel about CW's decision to not renew the show. Also on a side note before I end this, one of my viewers said there was some type of evil scene or something where it was something sinister. Whereas Peter told Nadia that the angels want to stop the rapture and she this viewer became offended by the message and I wanted to tell that viewer that that was not an evil message basically these messengers are here to stop the apocalypse and every single solitary from A to B part one part two part three that's going to lead up to said apocalypse in no way do I see anything that's evil that does not mean I'm going to discount what you're thinking but I did watch the scene over and I realized what he was saying and maybe it was written a different way but in the beginning they mentioned that the sole purpose of these messengers is to stop the apocalypse as a whole everything prevent it from happening because once the rapture happens, the demons come right back on up or right up and they take over the earth pretty much. So that's what I perceived happened in the episode. And I do <clears throat> and I do respect this person's opinion. Unfortunately, this person no longer wants to watch the show, which is pretty sad. But you guys take care. Sage Valentine here signing off and I will be watching the next episode at 9 p.m. I love you guys. Bye guys. Bye. <laughs>